We're going to look at a basic second law problem, Newton's second law problem, of an object being slid along a rough surface, just to see the mechanics of how to do this problem, uh, no pun intended. Uh, so let's say we have 40 kilogram object being pulled along by a rope and the tension on the rope, we'll say, is equal to uh, 30 newtons. The ground is rough, and the friction it has, and we'll give an actual value for this for now, will be, um, let's say, 17 newtons. The question we want to ask is, what is the acceleration of the object, and what is the ground force, the normal force on the object? So the first one we want to answer is, what is the acceleration and b what is the normal force given by often by the symbol f with the subscript of n um, normal meaning perpendicular all surfaces supply perpendicular forces. The floor pushes up in a perpendicular direction. The wall will push out in a perpendicular direction. So normal is the mathematical sense of the word, meaning perpendicular. There are two steps we do. We start off by drawing a, a free body diagram. So that's the first step you do. And then the second step will be to write the second law for both the x and the y direction. And pretty much we should be able to see what comes out of that. So let's draw the free body diagram of this object. There it is there. I think I said it was 40 kilograms. Yes, yeah, so I'll put 40 there, kilograms. <clears throat> there is a, a there is a tension pulling the object to the right. Okay. We know the value of that. I'll put that in momentarily. There's a friction preventing it being pulled from the right. What else? Well, there's a weight to the object, which is going to be its mass times gravity, which is 9.8. And one more force. That's the normal force pushing up on the object the ground holding the object up. Well, that's essentially it. This is essentially what you would ordinarily call an engineering free body diagram. The forces are located approximately where they are encountered. The friction, you notice, is near the bottom of the object. That's where the friction is going to occur between the surfaces. The normal force is acting up on the bottom. The, the weight acts from somewhere in the middle of the object, and the tension is being pulled towards the right. It's attached at the right side of the object. The physics version of this, and whichever one you are comfortable using, you can use, or whichever one your teacher requires, is essentially just a dot. And the forces emerge outward from that dot. So we would show the forces, the tension coming out this way, the friction going back in that direction, the weight pointing down and the normal force pointing up. Whichever one is more convenient for you to use, that's okay. Or whichever one, as I say, that you're required to use. Now we want to write the forces in the x and y, the second law for the x and y direction. So there's the sum of the forces in the x direction. There it is. Sigma f, that's the Greek letter sigma, indicating you sum all the forces in the x direction from i equals 1 to, in this case, uh, there'll be two forces in the x direction, as we'll explain. And that's going to equal ma. And uh, we'll sum the forces in the y direction, which will also equal mass times acceleration. And if we look on our diagrams, we can see that we have how many forces in the y direction. Here's our coordinate system here. There's x plus x minus x, minus y, and plus y. So in the uh, y direction, vertical arrows, we can see we've got 
from looking at either diagram, we can see that we've got two. So we've got two forces acting also in the y direction. Let's look at the x direction first. Um, in the plus x direction, pointing to your right, we look at the diagram and we see we have a tension pointing to the right. That's Because that's pointing to the right, we're going to make that positive. Look at the friction below it. I'll write that over here too. Look at the friction arrow now, the F sub K, kinetic friction. That's pointing to the left. That's pointing in the negative X direction. So I'm going to make that negative. That is how I'm going to enter them in my equation. Now there is some acceleration in the X direction. So that's going to be MA. So we just bring down the right side of the equation. And on the left side of the equation, we enter the arrows we've drawn on our diagram. We use our diagram to solve these equations. I see the tension is positive and the friction is negative. So that's it. That is a valid equation for the free body, uh, for the, uh, from the free body diagram for that object in the x direction. We'll continue that uh, momentarily. Let's look at the y direction now. What is the acceleration in the y direction? The question we can ask, we can look up at the object up at the top there, is the object doing anything this way? We hope not. It's not being lifted up. It's not falling through the ground. So the acceleration in that direction should equal zero. And if the acceleration equals zero in that direction, then we just have a big zero on the right side of that equation. And we just have to fill in the formulas over here. So now we look at the arrows pointing upward and pointing downward. And as you can see from either diagram, I've got two of them. I've got the normal force pointing up. And from my little coordinate system drawn in blue in the middle there, I can see that that's, point, that's going to be positive. And that's going to be positive. The weight, which is represented by mg, mass times gravity, is pointed downward. That's my negative y direction. So that's going to be negative. Now I just place them into the equation the way I've drawn them. I have the normal force is positive and mg is negative. From that I can see that my normal force is equal to mg, the weight. So let's solve this now using the numbers. If I recall correctly, well we'll go back up and look. Tension 30, friction 17. Okay, so here we have the tension is 30 minus 17. The mass is 40, and there's my equation. I get 13 equals 40A, and then A equals 13 divided by 40. Uh, now that would be 13 newtons divided by 40 kilograms, which is then, oops, equivalent to, let's see, 13 divided by 40, is 0.325. So the acceleration is going to equal 0 0.325 newtons per kilogram. We recall that's equivalent to 0 0.325 meters per second squared. So we found the answer to part A. For part B, we now look up here. The normal force is going to equal to 40 times G, which is 9.8. Always a positive 9.8. And so the normal force is going to be 40 times 9.8, which is 392 newtons. So that's our answers for this problem.